morning guys. So um, we're driving Germany at the moment uh, to a small uh, military show. Um, we can't film inside but um, hopefully um, we'll find some treasure and uh, if we do uh, we'll try to show it to you uh, later in the hotel today. show today uh, as you can see here the table is full of new uh, stuff that we found and I'll talk you through a few of the highlights uh, that, uh, that I've, I've had the chance to buy today so um, so maybe we start here a very typical stuff that you can still find in Germany are of course spike helmets this is a, a Bavarian uh, spike helmet comes in the original box uh, it's for a, a police officer um, see the cocarda still on this place it's missing on the other one, happens sometimes. A variant shield on the front. Of course, the interior still complete with the full lining. All original, uh, unmessed uh, spike helmet. Um, this is of course also nice. You can see the shape is a bit off, but it's original uh, pink piped uh, uh, Panzer visor cap. Uh, interior is still there. Um, and it looks a bit like it was crushed uh, back in the days. But it's uh, original applied insignia and has a few mod damages, but still uh, finding Panzer caps today uh, is fairly hard. Then here, it's one of my favorite pieces that I often find in Germany. It's a, a standard uh, Gladiator Luftschutz helmet, three-piece uh, helmet. Uh, but this one is must have been one of the best ones I've ever found. Uh, dark blue color, uh, very sharp decal on the front, almost 100% intact. And then you can see the liner. It's just perfect. The, the information uh, decal on the on the rim here uh, is perfect. Size 58. It's a nice large size. Uh, the chin strap is there. Drawstring is there. The liner is there. It's one of the best gladiator helmets I have ever encountered in my life. Uh, but also something very uh, typical for Germany is of course the Mein Kampf book, uh, uh, Hitler's book. Uh, these are the wedding editions, and both of them are, are signed with, with the mayor. Um, and they're coming in the original uh, uh, slipcase. Slipcase. Thank you, Philip. Um, I'll talk through the badges a bit later. Um, we'll move on here. Uh, this is, of course, a very nice example we found uh, uh, as SCUF title. Um, and you can see here it's a Bivo Wuppertal marked on the end. Got some verlichtingen. Was a unit uh, active in Normandy during the Second World War. Then here, uh, very attractive uh, navy or Kriegsmarine side cap. Uh, the cloth is almost black, it's that, that dark. It has original applied insignia on it, and it's nicely size marked in the interior. Typical uh, navy stamp in white inked that we uh, like to see. Textbook cap. Then here is, is a beautiful um, uh, red piped uh, artillery visor cap for enlisted men or uh, uh, NCOs. Um, the interior, uh, green interior, is uh, typical for the firm of uh, Pekudo and also typical for that same firm is uh, the felt black band you can see here and that the green interior. The, it's one of the better visors I had encountered this year. It has no mod damages, um, has a perfect saddle shape, uh, aluminum insignia on the front, uh, original applied, uh, just a very, very good looking cap. Um, the best item I got, it was also the first item I got on the show, it was uh, put on the table and I was lucky to have my hands on it first, is an original uh, late war uh, Paro Super or Falschenmeger helmet M38, uh, it has the, the, the thick uh, late war bolts, uh, all original, um, show it here, beautiful uh, green color, of course it has no decal anymore because it's a late war helmet, but the nice thing about it is of course, the liner is still there and the full length straps are there. Still very supple, not damaged uh, at all, uh, complete with uh, snap buttons. Uh, and the interior is nicely maker marked, uh, size marked. There's a small tear here in the, la in the leather, but it still feels soft. Um, the rubber paddings are all complete, still, still feel uh, soft. 
and it's uh, of course as you would expect for a late war helmet uh, marked in the rear double marked uh, by ckl or et uh, the previous uh, it's double rear marked and the lot number is just underneath so it's a very nice textbook late war uh, false maker helmet untouched conditions uh, with with the straps uh, these are becoming so hard to find uh, today then furthermore uh, it's the first time I've ever had uh, a pair of these uh, Africa uh, tropical boots uh, with the high lace uh, high lace boots um, they were worn but not uh, totally uh, ruined of course you can see the soles are in fairly good condition there are still markings over here I have to still determine what it says and uh, and they're also um, nicely marked inside uh, in the interior uh, stampings you can find right over here uh, similar markings would be in the other boot as well um, and in this boot there's also a stamp of the factory uh, it says shoe fabric uh, I have to I can't say what the rest says but nicely marked uh, German boots uh, Africa boots very hard to find uh, then here we have a uh, MG uh, Z40Ks, it's the optics that, that were used for a MG42 gun. Um, it's a late war case, uh, Waffenamt marked and maker marked HRV, and the Waffenamt is right over here. And of course, very important, the carrying straps are still there. Of course, as most of the times, the shoulder strap is, is not there anymore. Um, it's the, the type is right over here. and. It has, uh, it's been painted in the uh, tan color, which is typical for late war equipment. This is also a, a, a nice uh, German collecting bin for uh, Winterhilfewerke. Uh, people could collect, uh, would collect money in the streets in Germany for uh, the German army in the winter. Um, it's of course a nice example with the swastika uh, on the front. Um, not all of these had, had it and still intact and the paint is in, in fairly good condition. Um, Moving on here, we have a, a nice uh, um, first World War spike helmet, late war example, M15 example. Um, it didn't have any brass uh, parts anymore, but metal parts to save, uh, to save on the, the brass metal actually. So it was made uh, with uh, cheaper um, materials, of course. It's complete with the liner, uh, it's unit marked as well. Uh, yeah, just a nice worn piece. Chin strap is there, missing the buckles, but it's still there, it's mostly missing. Um, and then a very interesting uh, M, uh, M43 coat here. It's a typical standard German coat for the, for the normal German soldier. But if you look closely inside, of course, it is maker marked by E. Uh, Rights. Of course, we see the stamp here as well. Uniformwerke E. Rights, Antwerp in Belgium. This was a, a, a firm uh, in, Belgium, in occupied Belgium that made German clothing and uh, it's a but, uh, very desirable uh, to collect by, uh, by collectors nowadays. So we already saw it here. There are a lot of badges here. Um, uh, in Germany it's, it's, it's very common to find, uh, still find nice badges of course. And uh, I was lucky enough uh, to have uh, Philippe de Bock with me at the stand uh, who could uh, help me determine if these were original or not. Um, so we have a large amount of, we found a large amount of iron crosses uh, today. Um, and of course some nice uh, combat badges um, and of course here my, my favorite one of my favorite medals uh, it's the Olympia second class cross in enamel um, design wise one of the most beautiful uh, sorry uh, medals uh, there is in my opinion I used to collect these when I was young um, and now I, I found a, a very nice example here to show so this was about uh, what I found at the show uh, and we'll now have a, a small talk with, with Philip, who's filming right now um, about his uh, new book on the Panzer Assault badges. And uh, we will we'll try and see what I found on the show. He can determine if they're, they're good and what type of badges and manufacturer they actually are. So I'm with here with uh, Fluc de Bock, um, uh, expert in combat badges and of course author of uh, the Panzer Assault uh, book. Um, Philip was with me at the, the stand the whole day, actually the whole, the whole week here, uh, helping me out and um, also helping me out if the stuff I buy is actually original, uh, which can, can be very convenient sometimes. So today I bought uh, five pounds of salt badges. So um, Philip, can you tell me what are the makers of these badges? 
Yes, uh, hi guys. First time uh, I appear on, uh, on YouTube and uh, it's always fun to help uh, Sander at this uh, stand and uh, um, allow him to specialize or uh, broaden his knowledge a little bit about uh, awards. Not really a specialty, but in the meantime he's getting better and better all the time. As you, most of you probably know, it's getting more and more difficult to find good uh, original uh, uh, Panzer Soul badges and all other badges, in fact. But nevertheless, uh, while I was attending the stand, uh, Sander had a time uh, to go hunting and he managed to find five uh, nice original uh, Panzer Assault uh, badges. So it's uh, clear that he read my book and uh, uh, broadened his uh, knowledge. Um, so the five uh, awards he found are uh, four late war uh, badges and uh, the nicest uh, one he picked up was uh, an early hollow boot metal uh, Karl Wuster made uh, badge. Uh, the mother of all bronze grade uh, PABs in fact. They are also getting expensive nowadays, not really rare, but an absolute uh, beauty when it comes to uh, early German uh, Panzer design and uh, development uh, quality. Uh, besides uh, that, what he picked up uh, was an uh, unmarked uh, Franken Rife in absolutely beautiful condition with all of its finish uh, preserved, unmarked, uh, so uh, a later uh, Franken Rife made uh, uh, Panzer Soul badge. Uh, next to that, uh, Sander picked up a more worn example of uh, a maker that isn't really everybody's uh, favorite maker, but if you're um, lucky enough to find the good war made uh, examples, this Rudolf Suval uh, made uh, award is a perfect example of a mid war produced uh, bronze grade Panzer Assault uh, badge. Uh, the fourth batch uh, he picked up is an uh, AS in triangle uh, marked uh, mid-war semi-hollow PAB with uh, a silver grade, still in a very nice uh, condition um, and a, a typical uh, product of the Gabons made, uh, based uh, uh, makers of Panzer uh, sole badges. And the last one, not everyone's uh, favorite, but an absolutely uh, original batch is a late war uh, solid zinc uh, Rettenmeyer made uh, bronze uh, grade. So um, I must say that uh, Sander really uh, managed to uh, pick five nice original uh, PABs out of a notion of, uh, of fakes, and uh, I think he's making a very good progress in uh, broadening. Uh, um, the stuff he can uh, offer to you guys on his uh, website. Mm -hmm. So, so Philip, uh, just a small, a few small questions. So, you said here it's um, the, the AS I bought here is silver grey. Uh, you said the, the Gablons makers. What, what do you mean by, by that? Gablons makers um, in the PAB book. Uh, those are in fact the type three uh, makers, and you had. Uh, uh, three different makers that all were active in the same region in Germany, uh, the region in uh, around Gablons, and A as in Triangle is one of the makers. Uh, 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 next to A as in Triangle, you had Adolf Scholze and uh, Rudolf uh, Carnet, who uh, both used a design that is very similar to what uh, A as in Triangle uh, used, and this only shows that the makers that were based in that region also used the same die cutters um, to make the uh, stencers uh, that they would uh, use to produce uh, PABs. Yeah, so, so, uh, yeah, so if I stand correctly, the, the firms in, in like a region would, would work together with, with a certain amount of the same people. Hence, we can we can see that the designs are yeah, fairly yeah. the same yeah. for for a, uh, for a region. Yeah. Um, now maybe you, you can show it in the book uh, real quick. Um, this is your you said the nicest badge, a very yeah. early one, so, uh, the best I bought. Yeah. Uh, paid quite some money for it as well, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. Uh, but I, I really wanted to have it because uh, yeah, it's just a very nice looking badge. Uh, can can you show it how easy we can find it in the book? Yeah, yeah. it's the second maker in the. Um, in PAB book uh, type 1 uh, 2 and it's an early hollow first die design and if you look in the book and here you have 
the different types of uh, uh, mostly bronze grade Panzer Soul badges uh, Muster produced. And the type Sander found is the type uh, Die 1 uh, bronze grade. Uh, so, as you see, okay. we found absolute textbook example with a very nice uh, uh, finish, completely intact with its uh, original uh, setup. So, thanks for, for showing this. It's a beautiful book um, uh, for all the people watching. Uh, you can always contact us, and I'll, I'll give the, the, the contact of Philip later if you want to have a, a copy of these. I, I assume it's a limited edition. It's a limited edition. It's the second edition of the PAB book. Yeah. The first edition uh, was published in uh, 2009. But uh, long sold out, um, as a result, prices kept on rising. And um, so it wasn't available really for collectors anymore. Um, it's uh, during the COVID uh, crisis of a poor pandemic that I decided to put some work in a revised edition of the PAB book. I was able to add 200 pages of extra information. And uh, the book now uh, is available uh, since June uh, 2021, but limited to uh, 500 uh, examples. So you heard it, 500 examples. A lot of them are already sold so, because yeah. I was a witness at the show. Philip was selling the books. So if you want one, be quick and uh, contact us and I'll, you'll be in touch with Philip a bit later. We'll show you uh, now a little bit of uh, close-ups of the book and, and the badges. Uh, so th thanks, Philip, for uh, for this interview. Always nice uh, doing and, uh, show with you. Yes. <laughs> okay. very special item I found today, just uh, looking at a little bit closer to it, is a, a close combat clasp, uh, the clasp itself of course, uh, by FLL, textbook bronze piece, but uh, it also came with, uh, with the original document. The document was in very poor condition and it was restored, uh, but of course special for me, as you know, my name is Sander and uh, the soldier's name was Fritz Sander. So makes it a little bit special for me and uh, this will be uh, of course in addition to my uh, private collection because of the name uh, so yeah just wanted to share that with you guys Germany. Um, we had a great show as you already saw on the video before. Um, 
a bit tired from the trip but uh, anyhow thanks for watching uh, our, our new video and don't forget to uh, subscribe for more videos as I said before it's very important you subscribe because like this we get a, a bigger audience uh, worldwide and uh, you help us uh, uh, getting more people with, us, with these videos so thanks for watching and uh, see you soon for the next video